first of all, I guess phones. Um, I currently upgraded around Christmas to the 13 Pro. All right. Um, okay. Yeah, you know, for personal use, but I do have an XR yeah. um, that I could probably upgrade. I think the last person that mentioned a 10, you suggested they upgrade. Yes, that's correct. So um, the iPhone 13 Pro that you're currently using as your personal phone, mm -hmm. uh, in the meantime, you can actually utilize it for your upcoming business that you're about to establish. The 13 Pro is going to be more than enough. I'm using a standard 13. So okay. a, a 13 Pro is, of course, one tier higher than mine is, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to the camera quality and the stabilizer. Your phone has a better stabilizer than my phone uh, just because it's a Pro and they focused a lot on the video and the camera aspect of the phone. Okay. Uh, when you're using your phone at an event, just saying, yeah, you can just go to a settings and then go to the focus. So that way, while you're doing your event, no calls come in or text messages and it doesn't interrupt. Oh, okay. That'll save you some money from getting a secondary line right off the bat. Yeah. Um, I have a secondary line that I don't use. So it's just there, but it's I'm not really paying for it either. So if I can avoid that at first, then um, I might just stick with using my phone, see how that works out. I wouldn't be able to get any other content, though, you know, while I'm there. So that would sure, be sure. kind of hard. It's totally so. If you want to use that iPhone 10 to get contents from like the back scenes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. You right. can do that. And then on your iPhone X, make sure that when you're recording and you go to video camera, you're recording at a uh, minimum 30 to 60 frames per second. The reason I say um, 30 from 60 is if you record, if you go on your iPhone X and you record at 60 frames per second, you're going to need good lighting. But what it does, is it captures a smoother picture. So if you need to speed it up or slow it down, because it's 60 frames per second. When you compress this, it, it doesn't come out uh, grainy. It doesn't come out uh, okay. like low quality. So yeah. that's just a tip for when you record like in the back scenes. Um, definitely okay. try to use 60 frames per second as much as possible, minimum 30 frames per second. Okay. I also, actually, I totally forgot. I have a DSLR that I never, I don't, it's like hasn't been used in years. Okay. Um, have you experimented at all with, um, I have maybe two uh, operators that have just used DCLR cameras since the jump. Uh, and I got feedback from them. They're saying it, it works well. But for me, because it's all I need is the DCLR, I believe you need to connect it to um, a phone in order to oh, use, yeah. so you use the phone as a trigger. Yeah. So for me, I want to minimize the amount of weight I'm putting in the, on the arm because that yeah. arm rotates and it builds momentum. And the more weight you have on the arm, two things, it's going to be harder on the motor because the motor has to pivot that out, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it, it needs torque. And if the uh, arm is too heavy, it also, it, you get off to a slow start too. Um, Got it. And, and there's that countdown aspect of it. Yeah. So try to, uh, I would say, uh, just try to keep your arm as light as possible, um, not adding like a bunch of stuff on it. Okay, so definitely better than to use a phone. The, um, the beauty part of the phone too, just saying, sorry to cut you off really quick, yeah. is, is that you can airdrop, say for example, your iPad right. train station is just, you're just having one of those nights where it's not loading up fast enough, right. right? Then the attendees that come off the booth, you can just airdrop directly from your phone on the arm without even having to remo remove the phone from the arm, which mm -hmm. is great because if you were using another type of device, that wouldn't be uh, an available feature. Got it. Okay. Um, that's a good actually, uh, kind of segue. Um, you mentioned, I think you're not using the iPad sharing station or the, um, TV anymore. I'm not using the external screen, the Apple TV. I'm not using those two. It's a combination. It's an actual right. TV. And then the, the uh, Apple, I'm not using that anymore. There was too much interference. Uh, I went over to Apple. I bought a secondary one thinking maybe I had a defective one because I did drop it a couple of times. Uh -huh. um, bought another one. I ended up getting the same results, and I finally went to Apple. I wanted to. I, I just returned the new one, and I and I told them the issue that I was having. And they're saying that, uh, depending on where you're at, most places they ha it's it's like an interference with the signal in the Wi-Fi, and it jams it up where it oh, disconnects. Okay. And I didn't want to have that experience uh, because in the past, just saying, yeah, there was a situation where the birthday girl was on the platform, mm -hmm. did the whole rotation, and then I was as it was loading and rendering. It just stopped. 
and it did it twice mm -hmm. and it was embarrassing for me as yeah that's what i don't want to deal with yeah it's the embarrassment of technical difficulties and oh so, and, and the worst part is when they're putting their props away and you have to tell them hey guys let's go ahead and, and, and reshoot let's do take two and they look at me like why and i like yeah, for some reason the video crashed um yeah i went ahead and refreshed everything so let ever since i stopped using the external tv that has not been an issue um mm -hmm. plus it's it's been saving me a lot of time from the loading process as well unloading i'm still okay. using an ipad sharing station definitely using so iPad. you are doing that still okay ipad well, sharing station okay. is is uh is really helfful because it's almost like an assistant uh just saying yeah because it's kind yeah. of big. then it's you don't have thing. to deal with the drop um air dropping you could just send them to the precisely yeah to the ipad um okay um it looks like you use a ton of space <laughs> i do you know the square footage you use so at, at first i always requested a minimum of 100 square feet that was more than enough for my prop table in my in my 360 booth mm -hmm. but when i started adding items like a extra tripod to put on fog uh, fog machines and yeah. lights and then also have a fog machine on the ground and also have cold sparks i realized that uh it, it takes up more space because you need power from wall outlet, which means you have to run more cables. But you want to try to do everything as uh, as neat and tight as possible. Mm -hmm. But it's also nice to have a good extra amount of space and to be limited in space because when you're limited, your production is limited. When you have ample amount of space, sometimes the issues are like, how do I block off with my stanchions because I don't want kids to come out yeah. of nowhere while the arm is in motion. I was in a situation where that happened. so. I just kind of use the actual tripods as stanchions, kind Got of like it. way. Mm -hmm. Take a um, space, yeah. So which which might lead to another conversation about stanchions. I highly recommend stanchions. Uh, just saying. Yeah, they're on my um, budget. Um, so you're doing more of a twelve by twelve now, or how? Yeah, I th that it would be safe to say that if you can get you know twelve by twelve, one hundred and forty four square feet, yeah. that's going to be more than enough, and. Um, it, it it's uh it's the amount of space I think good for like a one hundred centimeter booth plus your prop table. I've noticed some operators are starting to take out two prop tables, which is kind of crazy. But then I realized too that they actually have an assistant, which makes mm. sense. You know. Yeah, yeah. I have two small tables right now with like two um four foot, four foot uh, tables. Yeah, I I would probably take both then if they're if yeah. they're four feet each. Just saying. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Um, another question. Uh, I noticed you don't use backdrops. Yeah, so the backdrops that you've probably seen in the videos, those backdrops belong to the actual client. Yeah. Most clients will produce or uh, bring their right. own, uh, backdrops. Mm -hmm. The reason why is because they're going to take family photos mm -hmm. and, and things like that. And for us as operators, because our arm is constantly spinning in a 360 motion, you can tell that the back is only visible for a couple of seconds. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense to, um, to have it. Yes. Um, which also leads me to the inflatable um, booths. Have you seen those? Closed inflatable booth, yeah. Yeah, what do you think about those? So uh, I feel like, so one thing is I, ha I also did another one-on-one -on -one in person uh, because the individual didn't live too far from me. So they had an inflatable, they hadn't even opened. Mm -hmm. and, but I've seen them in action as far as how they look. And it, it's neat in a sense where you do have control over your lighting. One thing yeah. about 360 booth uh, production, just saying, is that when you do them outside during the daylight, for me, I'd rather not do it straight yeah. up. I, I, I don't like the way the production looks. It doesn't right. look high end. It looks very amateur. Yeah. yeah. Um, so with the enclosure, if they want to book you early in the day from three to six, whatever the case might be, with that enclosure, now you have more control of the light. You don't, you're not going to get that sun glare, right? But the thing is you're going to need a lot more square footage. Plus, you have to factor in how long that thing takes to inflate and yeah. how long it takes to disinflate because that's all setup time and that's time that you're there and it takes away from your you know, productivity in a sense. So my thoughts on it is if you have a partner and you feel like it definitely adds to your production and clients are willing to pay a little extra more because you are investing in that inflatable, yeah. then it's worth it. If you don't want to do it, uh, as far as starting off, I think it'd be totally fine because most of us operators don't have it. Yeah. It, it's a nice look. It's a nice touch. Um, I, I think th the 360 booth, though, when you put the booth inside, 
plus the arm extends, plus the RGB lights. You need to have enough space inside that enclosure, which I think it's 10 by 10. And when you put your own, own RGB lights at tripods, because you need really good lighting, I think it's going to be very difficult to fit those in there with the people right. and then have you inside kind of giving them directions and cues. Yeah. So there's, there's limitations to it, just like anything. Um, what I liked about it was that it looked like they had the one that I just kind of saw because I did message um, Jeremy last night and you know how like different products will pop up. It had um, the lights already built in, mm -hmm. but they I mean, they're probably not great. You yeah. probably need the RGB in addition to like all the little neon. Yeah, you're very observant because that's actually a fact. Um, those light strips are more uh, more for a look and not so yeah. much for the uh, for the idea of it producing enough light to help your light your light sensor on your phone gain enough light to capture more of a rich image. So you're definitely right. Those strips look super cool, right? But mm -hmm. those strips alone won't be enough to give you enough light for your production. Uh, and, but then you have your U200 light on top of that, on the actual arm. And that U200 light does help a lot. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, how long does it um, normally take you to set up? In the beginning, it took me like 35 minutes. Okay. And then as I added more uh, equipment to my setup, and now it's, and, and, and I started going to th these events solo, it takes me like an hour and 20 minutes just because I'm unloading all the equipment and you really need to coordinate because, uh, mm -hmm. for example, say you have your lights on one side, you have your fog machine, then you have your fog machine on the ground. You need to know how the wind is blowing and how that's going to affect your production versus mm -hmm. just showing up and just putting everything, boom, there it's done. You really yeah. have to angle stuff and put stuff in a certain way where when people see your videos, they're going to want to book you, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, I'm going to have trouble doing outdoor events here because the weather's not. Yeah. We have, yeah, we don't. I won't do many outdoor. Okay. Um, and if I do, it'll only be probably uh, late July and early August, maybe mid July to mid August. Okay. So most um, events here indoor. Um, yeah. But yeah. So yeah, a lot, a lot. I've been doing. I want to say maybe eighty percent of my events are outdoor. Okay. And what are your first like? How do you go through and you know? Do you have a system checks? You know, list when you first set up. Like how? Yeah, how do I make sure everything's gonna work? You know, yeah. the first time people get on. <laughs> so the first thing that you want to do, just saying, is get plenty of practice at home in the comfort of your home. Mm -hmm. Do like test trials with lighting with angles uh with uh, upload speeds and all that great stuff and when you first get to your event to your location now in the beginning i used to have a checklist but because i kept on adding equipment yeah. and more equipment that checklist i got tired of revising it and yeah. printing out a new one so now it becomes muscle memory because you know all of your equipment like it's literally right here at first i didn't think it was possible because i'm very anyways that's another story but uh yeah. My memory is not the greatest when it comes to remembering certain little things. But yeah. now I can tell you, like, hey, I almost took off without my portable um, air pump. I have a little air, portable air mm -hmm. pump for my inflatables. You know, to every little piece from cables, you it's muscle memory. When you get to your event, the first thing you want to do is, and and this is something that I messed up a lot uh, during an Amazon event. I set up everything, and then I brought out the booth last, which I never do. Yeah. Never, never do. But the way I packed everything into the van, everything was kind of around and on top of the platform. So I figured I just set up and then bring out the platform last. Now what it yeah. would happen is the platform wasn't working. It wasn't spinning. The remote stopped working. Not the remote, but the motor stopped working. So I had to cut the belt and, and used it manually. Um, but I guess what I'm trying to get to is when you get to your event, just saying, yeah, the first thing you should pull out is a 360 booth. Mm -hmm. connected to either the power outlet or your portable battery and just press the remote and as long as you have that rotating arm spinning you're going to be good okay another thing that you should always do is always activate the event at your at your place like you know how you, you are you going to use touch picks just saying um i was thinking about using uh the new one you're looking at luma booth i'm, I'm using luma booth um and because I've used Luma Booth now for two events, 
I like it. I don't love it. Um, just like I like touch picks, I don't love touch picks mm -hmm. because if those two can come together, yeah, they make the perfect software. <laughs> because look, I don't mind paying a little extra. Like if I can pay, uh, okay, so Luma Booth twenty dollars a month. Um, yeah, touch picks fifty dollars a week. I'm willing to pay, uh, you know, somewhere in the middle, but give me the touch picks quality, the 1080p yeah. resolution. And give me the settings from Luma Booth where I can do speed up my ramps and slow it down within that video. Not just your very basic uh, touch picks where it's boomerang slow mo, that's it. With Luma Booth, you're able to choose your speed, how slow you want it, and then have a breakdown and have these segments where yeah. it looks a lot cooler. Um, so it's the resolution that's keeping you from continuing using it. Yeah, so you'll, you'll be okay with Luma Booth during nighttime with really good lighting yeah it'll still come out decent at, at least to most consumers it, to them it's like wow yeah and as an operator i'm like hmm you know but because you know we're seeing our own productions constantly yeah and during the day it comes out kind of choppy uh I, I personally didn't like it but some clients want to do it during the day so i'm, I'm still learning every single event and those are those are that's my feedback for you as far as applications go is Luma Booth is okay during nighttime with really good lighting, especially if you want to save money. The settings are awesome. Another really cool thing, just saying, and, and I need to share this with the rest of the community as well, is Luma Booth. The videos upload really fast onto the iPad, and they also render really quickly on your iPhone, which is really amazing. Yeah, I think I might maybe start there and then um, check out TouchFix. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was another thing. Um, uh, but I think if I'm not getting a different phone, it doesn't really matter. Um, you had mentioned also that the iPad and the phone have to be logged into the same Apple ID. Yes. Or something. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, I might have to do a whole nother, um, session with the actual app because I, I only downloaded it and then I didn't want to sign up on this phone if I was gonna get another one and use like a separate sure, Apple yeah. ID for the two. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't really matter to use your personal, right? Well, you're an entrepreneur, right? So uh, what, I, what I see, and I'm not a psychic, right? Okay. But just, is that Frida? Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, so one cool thing about touch picks is I feel like you're gonna get a second, third booth in, in the future, just because you have that mindset of an entrepreneur and yeah. you definitely want to expand. So if you continue to use touch picks, as long as all your phones have that set, same Apple ID that you use for the subscription of touch picks, your employees are going to be able to use touch picks. And all you need is one touch picks account. And within that okay. one touch pick account, you can set up different events. So you could be at one event and mm -hmm. your employee could be at another event, as long as you guys are using the same Apple ID on those phones. Yeah. Okay. Just, um, just kind of but talk. same with Luma Booth though, right? Um I can't say yes because I'm not one hundred percent sure oh. that Luma Booth will allow us to do um multiple. I, I, there, I think there's a limit. I think there's a limit. Uh I don't know what the limit is. Okay. But they're all all these things are write offs though, so Yeah. Um do I still need, I don't need a hotspot if I'm just using the iPad and phone, right? So the way the hotspot works with Luma Booth, just, just saying, you know, is if your mobile hotspot, your, say this, for example, is a hotspot. Oh. Yeah. Right. I forgot I have a background. This is the yeah. hotspot. Uh, this is your phone you're recording with, and this is your iPad here. Uh, this is going to be hooked up to this hotspot, and so is this. As long as they're both connected to the same hotspot, that's how you're able to get those videos really fast from on, on when you're on the Luma Booth platform. When you're on when you're on Touch Picks, the way Touch Picks works is there's two different methods. One of them is you use your phone and you activate your phone as a sender and you activate the iPad as a receiver. That's one method. And then it'll work as long as your iPad has uh, cellular data, meaning either a SIM chip or you're using a mobile hotspot. Okay. It's different with touch picks because if you're using your iPad 
as uh, a sharing station and you're using the phone you're recording with as a mobile hotspot for the iPad, it, it, you're going to get interference and you're going to get slower speeds because you're making the phone work extra hard because you're using the phone as a camera to record, you're using the application touch picks, and you're using it as a mobile hotspot. That's what my next question was going to be is using the phone as a hotspot. So it is a good idea to get one regardless of the app that is being used. So that extra line that you have right now on your account, just saying, yeah, that yeah. line maybe in the future might be the line that you want to use to get a, a decent hotspot device. Who, who's your carrier, just saying? Verizon. Ryzen, okay. I don't know about Ryzen's plans. I do know about the mobile hotspot I'm using. It's a 5G hotspot. Uh -huh. um, and I'm using T-Mobile. And I think I get like 100 gigs for like 50 bucks because it's a business account. Okay. Just throw some numbers out there for well, you. Well, if I don't have to get a phone, I might as well just go in and use that existing one I have now and get it set up. Mm -hmm. But definitely want, to, definitely want to shop around before you commit. Uh, yeah. But, um okay um how are you transporting everything i'm trying to figure out if my car is gonna work <laughs> i have a, a small suv a crv it's gonna be a tight fit i think the crv cargo space is like i want to say maybe 60 uh 60 um cube, cubic feet i think the crv what here like a two like a 18 i was 18 you could definitely fit your 100 centimeter booth in there, uh, but when you start with the bigger bulkier items like stanchions yeah. and then your two tables, it's gonna be a tight fit. If you could Tetris it out and use, you know, re, what is it? Uh, drop your, your yes. passion seats down yes. uh, and you don't, and no one goes with you, you can even put stuff on the passenger side. I don't think you need to rent a van like I do every single week. I think you rent a van every week. Every single week I rent a van. Just saying, when I first started the business, mm -hmm. I was so infatuated with my website, my logo, my business name, all that stuff, how much money I was going to make hourly mm -hmm. and all that. I didn't stop to think that my 100 centimeter booth, which is 40 inches, uh, would not fit in my Camry. Make it even worse. I have a Camry hybrid. <laughs> <laughs> So my Camry oh. hybrid is saying it has a battery in the back, which makes my oh, trunk no. smaller than a standard. So when that happened, I was sad and, and I laughed at myself. I couldn't help it. I thought like, how could I not have thought about this? how to get your stuff? <laughs> but then you have to think about it too. It's like, I couldn't be too hard on myself because there was no one that I can learn from. Yeah. Yeah. I was just doing it on my own. I'm is... very grateful for all your videos. And yeah. So. <laughs> And this is why I started the channel. I thought this is going to be an interesting part of my life. It's going to be an interesting journey. Yeah. I do have some business experience. Um, let me see what how the world reacts to my journey. And, and oh my goodness, like I never imagined this would uh, unfold this way. I, mm -hmm. I, hundreds of people have started the 360 booth business because I decided to share my journey on you. It's tri yeah. tripped me out. It tripped me awesome. out. Awesome. Um, so how much do you pay every week for your van? I'm paying $80 per day. $80 per day and sometimes what I'll do is the people that I rent it from um, Say for example, I have an event on Friday and Saturday I rent it out for Friday and ask them if I can take it back Sunday morning <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a business Shame owner on you. And I need to minimize cost <laughs> They're a business too, David. They gotta no, make their money the, the, these, are, these are people I know already. They're, uh, they're oh. actually, yeah they're actually, um, man, these guys are like very abundant and wealthy. They have oh, okay. the van that I rent from them. Why don't you just a, buy it from them? It's the smallest little van. They have sprinters. They have beautiful big Mercedes sprinters. Oh, which van is it? Because I want this little van that I see my neighbor okay. has. I think your your uh, neighbor might have the sprinter. Uh, I think it's the sprinter Metris. No, he has a mm -hmm. Nissan. Uh, like NV. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a beautiful Super van. It's a, it's, it's a high yeah. it's a high roof van right um it's not too high no but it's little it's like a little compact it's for businesses that do like um does home i think like networking and stuff like that so they don't yeah. carry like big equipment yeah um i've done a lot of research when it comes to vans just saying so when you're ready to make a purchase i'd be more than happy to share my two cents with you when it comes to that but yeah for right now 
your CRV, ride that thing till the wheels fall. Try it. <laughs> and I just got, but um, I'm super anal about like um. How do I put it? Like, I like to take care of the things that I invest in. And so, like, I don't want to ruin my car. Well, um, the, your, your CRV is, you can sublease it to your LLC. No. Oh. And then when you sublease it to your LLC, now it's an expense on one end. And on the other end, it's a write-off because the mileage you're putting on it. Did you um, set up right away as an LLC or a sole prop? Uh, right away as an LLC. Because I did, I, I was a sole prop for my iPhone repair business, uh -huh. and I knew that the 360 booth was going to be a little bit more uh, lucrative, so I did the LLC, I went the LLC route, and because I also knew that I wanted to get a business account, and, and with time, I wanted to build business credit under an LLC. That was, yeah, that was one of my questions I didn't actually write down, um, was building business credit. That was another reason why I'm like, maybe I should just buy a car, because I have a vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like maybe I should just get the van, um, mm -hmm. but I don't want to get in too deep without seeing what the response is, you know? Yeah, I totally agree with you. Definitely Especially get a Especially being winter, you know, I'm only going to get maybe, you know, um, what do they call them? Company parties, you know, holiday parties. And then yeah. There's a wedding expo, I usually in February. I don't know if they're still doing it post COVID. Mm -hmm. um, so I was thinking about attending that um, as far as getting the word out. Um, we have a really cool um, business women community here. Um, it's called The Hub. Okay. So that's gonna be like where I start um, as far as getting out there. Yeah. Um, besides, you know, social media and website and all of that. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. Well, what backup equipment, what items do you suggest getting backups of? I, <clears throat> I got to a point where I, I invested in another 360 booth. So mm -hmm. I'm now I usually take two 360 booths to the event. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I made a video not too long ago and it kind of talks about don't be complacent. Don't become complacent in any right. business or uh, aspect of life. And I was complacent by loading up my one booth and taking it to the Amazon event. Um, big mistake because that was the time where my, broke. my booth decided to break. Oh. And I was so bummed out. I'm thinking like, you live and you learn, David, but you should have known better. Yeah. So um, now as far as other pieces that are not as expensive as buying a secondary booth, mm -hmm. um, you always want to have <clears throat> backup uh like u200 lights I, I have a backup talon cell battery that's the battery that powers up your right C booth i have two of those now um not too many backups besides a few batteries for like the bubble guns that i use most yeah. of the stuff that i have just saying yeah i try to keep it uh with the integrated battery uh, i don't like buying batteries I, I like keeping everything that i can just charge recharge with me mm -hmm backup uh, items i i have two phones i have my iphone 13 and i have an iphone 12 mini i started my business with an i12 mini okay. um, and then as far as other things that i can think of that are for backup I, that's that's pretty much it um mm -hmm. most of the stuff that we use is not super technical yeah the which i'm that's the part that i'm kind of afraid of mm -hmm. um but I'm I'm over it now. I think okay. as long as once I learn the um, app and choose one, which I think just based off what you're saying, the I like that the Luma booth is going to load quicker, yeah. uh, especially starting out. You know, you don't want lagging when you're starting out and stuff like that. Um, one thing um, that I, I I would say is if you're curious enough or can get yourself to it, uh, use both applications. I want you to use both applications because I want you to push yourself out of your comfort zone to learn more technology, yeah. to become a better operator. Because when you hire someone, I want you to be able to really know the infrastructure and not be limited to only one app, or one software. That's true. So I, I would prefer that you would get started on it early in your career and in your, in your business. Mm -hmm. That way, when you have conversations or you take both and compare them side by side, you know exactly what's going to work for you given the event, the okay. type of event. 
Um, so don't be afraid. I have a, a seasoned uh, operators that tell you that tell me like, no, nah, man, I don't touch uh, touch picks. I'm scared of that. And in my mind, I'm thinking like, wow, like I don't say it out loud, but I'm thinking like I would not, I would have never guessed that. Yeah. They're trying to avoid one one piece of software that can be a, a tool to their business, but um, that's just something I wanted to share with you while we're on the topic. Yeah. Um, okay. Ooh, what does your headset connect to? Do you have like a Bluetooth speaker? Yeah, so the, that headset, most of my videos on the description, you'll see everything that I'm using. Yeah. That particular mm -hmm. headset came with, uh, I bought the one that comes with the wired uh, cable that goes connected to a little speaker that I use. Are okay. you talking about the, my headset that I put on when I'm at events? Yeah, so that you can they can hear you. Yeah, uh, over yeah. the music and stuff. Definitely, you need you that. Have to yell. So, <laughs> my my throat right now, my voice was terrible yeah. two days ago. It's getting a little better today, just a little bit. Um, if it weren't for that speaker, it would have been a terrible night because I did back to back. I did Friday and Saturday. They were both two hours long, and at both events there was no breaks. There was absolutely no breaks. The line was just busy the whole entire time, especially because there was little kids. And little kids don't have that uh, doing things in moderation. Little kids, yeah. just, they just want to go keep all out. Yeah, and I was like, wow. But I mean, Saturday came around, same thing. I was like, oh, dude, you don't want to go dance inside? Like, <laughs> come on. <laughs> so nope. they want to be the main attraction. <laughs> main attraction. So to go back to the headset is that headset that I purchased, just so you know, it comes with a Bluetooth one that syncs to the uh, box. And then there's another, uh, in addition, there's a wired one that syncs to the box. I use a wired one because I don't want another piece of equipment that I need to um, sync and charge. And plus the Bluetooth makes it a little heavier. So it kind of, yeah. uh, to me, it doesn't sit well on my head. I like the one that's just wired. I just connect directly to the speaker box. So the, the box is what's on your hip? Yeah. The speaker, the speaker is on your is hip? My, is on my hip or I can actually um, have it around my neck. So oh, what? I thought it was like a whole nother. Oh, thing. you thought I was like, I had uh, like speakers on the side? And I, was I was picturing like, you know, like a uh, construction sites, they use like, you know, their speakers. Yeah. Like, that was, that's what I was picturing. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that would that's be pretty similar. cool. So, yeah. Because they're not, well, my mom has one that's like, uh, probably like four feet tall. Yeah. We still have a restaurant, so she has all kinds of random stuff. Um, So I was like, maybe I'll just steal that because it'll be loud and it's Bluetooth. Yeah. Um, and I think it can be charged and can be wireless and it lights up and does all this crazy stuff. But yeah, that's you one can, less thing. You, but... can, you can do something crazy like that. I'm just trying to think of your, uh, your current uh, transportation vehicle. Yeah. And, yeah. So, and, and that, it's a small little speaker, like tiny, like the size of your hand. <clears throat> you just turn up the volume all the way up high. And oh, yeah. Once you start oh, talking, perfect. you look even more uh, official. Yeah. Yeah. Uh... Okay, so now the important stuff. Yeah. Um, do you request deposit? All the time. Okay. All the time. The deposit that I request is just uh, I <clears throat> uh, reflects uh, where I'm comfortable at right now with. So, for example, they want to book for two hours. They want to reserve the date. To me, it's just a $100 deposit. I want to make it easier for them to put down the deposit. Right. And then my contract says the payment needs to be paid in full seven days for the date. Uh, right now, I had a, I bent my rules uh, last night. Uh, I'm pretty, I'm gonna go ahead and help someone with the cold sparks just for their uh, dance during their wedding. Yeah. And it's on Saturday. They put a deposit down. I I reminded them. I text messaged them, and they said if any way possible, I can't wait till Friday morning. For them to pay the remaining balance and in my mind it was like as a business owner it's like no yeah but like, basically if as long as it's before the event right i mean well you definitely want to tell them seven days before the event yeah because it just minimizes any type of friction or uh you know anxiety <laughs> like it, and then plus when you put it down on paper they signed off on it they already know like hey this is what i entered yeah. into this agreement and it is what it is it's on paper and we have to abide by that contract so yeah that's that's what i do uh okay. definitely helps especially with your cash flow i'm uh, just saying in the beginning yeah 
Um, which leads to kind of the biggest, the thing that kind of stresses me out the most is um, the contract, writing it, and how people will react to it, which if it's a, something like a wedding, they're going to have a contract or something with every single vendor. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I'm not trying to be racist. I'm Mexican, but, you know, Mexicans can be kind of, you know, like, Problem. why do I need a contract or whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, so everything about the like, I'll shake your hand. That's good. Enough. Yeah. Everything about it kind of stresses me out. Um, yeah. This is why it's essential uh, to use contracts because contract is yeah. a universal, uh, you know, abiding document. And the contract that I have on my website, it's 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 only 10 bucks. And what's cool about it is that you have it on your website can... like for um, operators to buy. Yeah, you could download the contract from my website. It's everything's already here. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so you can see how the contract looks like. I'm on your website too. Cuz on my website oh. it won't show the actual contract, but if I log into oh, my okay. page, you'll be able to see uh, the contract so you can get a glance <clears throat> of how that contract looks when you're getting it ready to send out to a client. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> you can see my screen just saying. Yeah. So there yeah, like the day that they agreed, the day that they booked the provider your information or your address the client and then uh, event information time date place mm -hmm. deposit this is all stuff that you'll revise and then make it okay. to you know to match the type of business you want to uh, run and then under what terms mm -hmm. so i love that you uh, mentioned uh, in one of your videos that you have designated parking <laughs> requested in there <laughs> Yeah, that can, because, yeah. yeah, especially if you don't set up prior to the event starting, like prior to the reception starting. Yeah, um, that's super important. Something that I wouldn't have thought of. Right, right, exactly. And this is this is, goes back to just me sharing my journey and and learning from experiences. And that's the truth. You get to an event, and you know, I I tell my clients, guys, book me during prime time so you can get the most bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. What that means is by the time I show up, there's already a ton of cars. So because yeah. there's a ton of cars, it's like, where do I park to unload? And yeah. you, and then you'll notice too, just saying, yeah, you always want to minimize the amount it takes to load and unload. Right. Not to mention to pack up and set up. Okay. So in the contract um, or like when they contact you, do you have kind of a consultation like checklist that you go through like where do you want it what time you know all of that yeah so when they when clients book with me they they book on my website it'll ask um is it going to be indoors outdoors is there going to be a wi-fi connection available if needed is there going to be a power outlet within 50 feet how many people are attending and what's the address to the venue those are uh, pre-filled, those are uh, questions that the client asked before they even book on my website. And then I, I get that information. I also get a notification that someone booked and put down the deposit. At that point, if they didn't call me to book, I'll follow up with them and I'll let them know, hey, I'm very glad that you booked with us. I just wanted to kind of introduce myself. And then that's the part where you kind of get a feel for their event. Are you guys having an anniversary? Are you guys having a birthday? Um, as far as the photo booth placement, it needs to be placed on a flat surface. And then, then from that point, from that conversation, from just building a rapport, um, you could tell, okay, well, it was a pleasure meeting you. Let me go ahead and send you over the 360 booth contract. It's time sensitive. So if you, if you can please review it and sign it within 48 hours, mm -hmm. boom. Even though their event's two months out, you spoke with them, they booked, uh -huh. they put down the deposit, they, they watched the, con they, they reviewed the contract, signed it, sent it back to you. You put that contract in your contract folder. And as time gets closer, you follow up with them again. Be like, hey, let's. T it's time for us to collaborate on an overlay. Let's work on your overlay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, the most important thing is coming up with pricing. Um, I I don't think I want to do um, five hour. <laughs> no, it's an overkill. Five hours at first. Yeah, that, that's an overkill. Yeah. Um. Probably just two, three, four. Um, two, three, four. Yeah. 
Yeah, the uh, one booth that I was saying is closest there, $14.95. For how many hours? Three. Wow. Uh, three hours, Lux booth attendant, custom overlay, instant sharing via text and airdrop, and theme props. Have you no seen any lights? No uh, cold sparklers. Okay. Like nothing extra. And they're about an hour and a half south of me. Mm. Um, yeah. Wow. That's incredible. I my pricing. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah. So uh, you already know how business is. So I would say just to kind of, um, you know, just add a little bit to what you already know is remain competitive and you already did your diligence. You checked them out. You checked out their website. You know what they're offering. Uh, now, at, at this point, what you want to do is the 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 competition uh, part of this business would be who can be found first when people are looking for the service. How? Yeah. Can you make it easier for them to find you than your competition? Yeah. And, and even in this situation, because this is a unique situation, they find your competitor at the very top and they find you two, three uh, names down, but they find you within that same radius and they find uh -huh. you in the very first page of Google. That's okay if they get find if they find th them first, because any any individual would get a second quote or shop around. Yeah. And that's the part where you're saying it just takes that, you know, like you just, you, you book them and yeah. because you're going to charm them all over the phone and they're going to like your pricing and it is what it is. And you're just going to rock it out. So yeah, I, mm, let me see. I forgot what your pricing is. Yours starts at like five ninety nine. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm, uh, but you're in a super competitive area, right? Super competitive area. But this is another thing you're saying is you will get busy. You will get busy. Uh, this is my first year in business, but I can tell you during graduation, you're going to be overbooked. Oh, shoot. Yeah, you're going to be overbooked. So what you do is you and I, uh, as business owners, we need to start uh, thinking into the future and coming up with what I called premium days. So, oh, yeah. Yeah. So Wedding premium season. days. <laughs> What's that? Wedding season. Wedding season. I didn't even know. Is there a particular season for weddings? Yeah. Really? Do yeah, you, like May to May to September. Why is that? Can you tell me? Uh, summer weddings. Summer weddings. Yeah, everybody. Well, I'm in Washington, so oh, everybody wants a sunny okay. wedding. Yeah, yeah. We don't have to deal with that as much. That's great. I'm glad that you're so aware of your surroundings and things like this. This is really good. Mm -hmm. Very impressive. So, um, yeah, remain competitive. And then with time, just start working on your overall production quality. That way, when they share those videos on social media, they're representing your business, whoever's uploading that video. <clears throat> because remember, it's going to be within a certain radius of where you're at for those people that are uploading those videos on social media. <clears throat> um, another thing, just saying, yeah, make sure you do a good job at setting up your Google business profile. Yeah, I have a um, friend, a good friend. She is a uh, virtual assistant. Okay. So I'm I'm just gonna hand that to her because I don't even want to deal with it. I don't want to. I don't necessarily want to learn it right now. Mm -hmm. I would rather um, like have her either do it or you know show me how to do it. I don't. I haven't talked to her about that part yet. Okay. Um. But but I did watch your video one of your videos on it um but yeah i got my uh domain last night cool and finally picked the company name i had to like actually make the logos so that i could decide yeah um and that helped a lot because i had like almost 20 name <laughs> 20 names that i was yeah. just jotting down um so that really helped <laughs> that was that, that was me at one point. I was struggling with the name. Um but yeah, I don't know. Um so if that if they're at 14.95 for 3 hours and they're in Seattle, so okay. in the city. <clears throat> I'm is, not is, in the is city. Seattle the cost of living is much higher as well, right? Right. Yeah. Right. So, I don't know, maybe and I don't want to 
go too high and have to tr drop my pricing right. either. So yeah, I don't know. I need to figure this out. If you can make over $300 an hour, okay, I think you're already winning. Now, if you feel like after you present your prices, and I'm telling you this from um, my my experience that I had with my first business as a iPhone repair technician, mm -hmm. if you're constantly booked, you're too affordable. Right. Right. So so get a feel for it. Um, sometimes it's better to get a feel than to assume, because now you are getting direct feedback from your demographics. Uh, from the people that stay within like, let's say a 20, 30 mile radius um, where your business is gonna be listed. The other thing I could look at is there is a um, company that does um, photo booths. Yeah. Um, so maybe just looking at kind of where they're at um, <clears throat> might help, I think, <laughs> see Definitely. what people are willing to spend on that just just know that the traditional photo booth is a whole different experience and that's oh yeah you, for sure that's how you sell it to your uh your prospects um and everyone is definitely right now wanting a 360 booth at, at their at their event yes um so jeremy he hasn't he replied his replies are kind of delayed but i know we're in a whole different time zone um the i asked him like how much they each weighed because most likely i'll be doing this by myself and i'm really sh i'm pretty short <laughs> so i'm not trying to look ridiculous <laughs> carrying this super heavy thing um the 80 centimeter one is 100 pounds so i'm glad you brought that up um remember the size of your platform is basically your production right yeah if you have a larger production you can charge more you need yeah to about your competition's uh size of their booth they don't if say if you can call them you can call them anytime uh, that's what i did i called i called around i didn't even think about that <laughs> but yeah, yeah i called around as, as, a, mm -hmm. as a potential client and i asked some probing questions and that's one thing is is when your clients call you right mm -hmm. you can easily tell them my production, my booth holds up to four adults at one time, which means that if you have 150 people uh, expected, if you book for a minimum of two hours, that's more than enough. And now they're incur that now it's like, oh, all I have to do is just book two hours. I don't have to book yeah. three, four hours because you just educated them that your booth holds up to four people at one time, which means they can get a nice circulation going on where people are going to get multiple videos because of the size of your production. And this also in a sense dictates how much you should charge to as far as the hourly rate goes because of the size of your production the 100 centimeter is the three to four percent one it's four people you can fit up to like five kids but it's like four adults and in some places of these uh states you get uh bigger heavier individuals <laughs> some guy straight up told me like david out here out here in the <laughs> south man like two people is already maximum yeah, capacity that's the limit. yeah and i told him i I laughed first because I thought that was hilarious. And then I ran into that same issue where I was uh, at at events where these girls were like really tall, really big. Yeah. And, and as soon as they got on, like I was looking at my my booth and, you know, you could tell by like. The oh, way no. I try to get them on both at the same time back to back. Yeah. And uh, just it, it was cool. It was cool. But okay. definitely want to keep an eye on that. And remember, the 100 centimeter booth is probably i would say the best size the 80 centimeter booth would be great if there was too many limitations like you didn't have a little suv right right and you weren't strong enough to pick up a 100 centimeter booth and many other factors and your budget was very small but the the 100 centimeter booth yes is i would say a standard size ideal. Mm -hmm. yeah ideal size um Okay, I'm just trying to um, kind Did of contact Cindy as well. Just saying. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. I only okay. contacted Jeremy so far. But always, I should. always compare prices and what I would do in your case. I would probably have both windows open and copy and paste the same questions you're asking them uh -huh. so that you can get responses 
with little effort that we don't have to go here and then here yeah. and here and then retext and then resend and all that stuff because shopping around could be draining yeah it is it's very draining mm -hmm. um do you charge any additional travel fees for longer distances like do you have a radius <clears throat> I don't. I don't. I like keeping everything very simple. Uh, even when it comes to like add-ons and stuff like that, I try to keep it very, very practical. Um, I could tell you that with gas prices, you definitely want to keep your driving uh, time less than an hour away. So yeah, uh, I've been in situations where I started marketing out in Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. that's far away from me. But I wanted to, I wanted to test out my SEO skills and and how much. I can gain and I started being successful and then I realized driving out there one hour and a half and coming back tired, I realized, um, nah, like I, I, yeah. I don't want to do this. I, I don't want to drive more than an hour to an event. So that's just me because I value my time differently and I see life differently. Yeah. But I think sure. that a lot of people can relate to their event shouldn't be farther than an hour away unless they're going to be there for three to four hours. And then it's like, okay, else. so maybe set a minimum. Maybe minimum the four hours or whatever yeah. to make it worth it. No, because I had people up in the mountains. They don't have uh, much things going on over there. And they're telling me, what's the minimum? Be like, well, given your distance, um, yeah. you know, like that. And then you, you say like, I would, I would, uh, <clears throat> you could do minimum three hours versus a minimum of two hours. And I wouldn't charge you an extra um, for, for traveling or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I have my budget together and it's about 3,300 right now. Okay. Um, but I haven't actually like built, you know, an Amazon yeah. car or anything like that. Um, I did pull up the van though to show you. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, so, this is the little oh, the NV2 Nissan. Huh? Yeah. That's the baby. There's a there's a yeah. bigger one than that. Yeah, but I feel like this would be good. I, I asked my brother in law about this spe specific one. He's this uh, one that he's, we're looking at. Yeah, he's he's been a Mercedes technician for like too long. Okay. And he's saying like just avoid Nissan. Really? He's, yeah. He, he told me either either you get a a, a Sprinter. They're so expensive, though. Yep. So that's the reason why I haven't bought a van just yet. Just saying, because I know that the economy is going to shift, and we're going to be in a situation where it's going to be a buyer's market, and we're going to get a low interest rate and a better deal. We just got to be patient. Mm, okay. Well, I wasn't going to get into this, but since we have a little bit of time, this is my logo and name. I took your advice and didn't put, you know, three sixty whatever. Um, Smart. Just in case. Because you will, you, you will more. scale. Yeah, you're definitely yeah. going to scale, especially in your area. You can scale. Um, yeah, so um, I it didn't look, when I like printed it, it didn't look great. So I'm, I still have to mess with it. It was like late at night that I finally felt inspired last night. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. I need to work on this more. This right here um, is going to be on your platform, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but now I want a little neon sign like you have. <laughs> yeah, I that, that neon sign, I had it in my room because I was shooting videos. But then I realized, why do I have it in my room? I need to take it to events. But where would I put it? And then like, this mm -hmm. is the part where you like kind of just your creative side kicks in. And I realized, mm -hmm. oh, my goodness, dude, I got to bring it out to every event. This looks so dope. Yeah, it's like your own little promo marketing. Yeah. Whatever. Um. You can get um you can get logos done for like ten dollars on on Fiverr and that logo they give it to you in an SVG transparent PNG they give it to you like in five different formats uh, and then you're asleep while they're working and then they'll submit their work to you and you tell them like I love it I hate it or can we change this Yeah well that this is something not... that um my friend my virtual assistant that I was telling you about she was <laughs> she's going to do my branding package for me beautiful for free yeah. <laughs> so i just wanted to get this you know out visually for i'm very visual so i needed to see the names um and how they would look and fall in love with it that way yeah um, but now i can just have her take this and clean it up and yeah get me the files the way i need them 
Very cool. And then your, your, um, your domain is the same? My domain is um, novaproductions360.com. <clears throat> no Productions 360. That's good because uh, the when it comes to the domain, it, it, it helps with the SEO. It helps with um, to map it out in the algorithm when you, you include the 360. But I yeah. like the Nova Productions as the brand because in the future, you can do the dancing on clouds effect. You can offer um, different types of lighting and atmosphere. I recently mm -hmm. bought a low-lying fog. You can make a lot of money. I saw um, that. That looks really cool. How much was that? <clears throat> so I bought uh, I bought a total of two machines. Just because I know that some some floors are going to be larger than other dance floors, um, I pay like eight hundred dollars for the machines. So um, you got those to offer separately, not as a part of the. Yeah, so I am going to offer that, and I am going to market that sooner or later. Right now, I'm just testing phase. That's all it is. Yeah. Um. So that's the logo, and then this is where I've been working on my budget. These were all <laughs> these were all the names. <laughs> there you go. Sassy Productions. But, yeah, my boyfriend was like, "That's too girly." Like, yeah, so I'm a girl, and no, I like Nova Productions. Um, but yeah, so I just adjusted this from 2000 based on um Jeremy's um, mm -hmm. last message. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, great, great uh, budget. I'm looking at it. Oh, stop moving it. <laughs> well, it's, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, I, 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 this is a good, these are great habits, you know? Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, well, yeah, those reach, were all my questions. <laughs> reach, um, reach out to um, Cindy as well. Okay. Uh, because I've done business with both of them and have them compete for your business. They don't, they wouldn't like me saying that saying that yeah but 